Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. After having studied several basic concepts in the grammar of Panini starting from meta language onwards, we have studied in the previous lecture the concept of sutra which is at the core in the text of Ashtadhyayi, the basic text in the Paninian grammatical tradition. We also looked at the types of sutras, six amongst them are the most prominent. Now we shall devote time to study these types in detail and the first type we take up is the Saudhnya Sutras, the technical terms, terms that are used in the Paninian grammar. The purpose of studying these Saudhnya Sutras is to understand the system better because this system identifies certain elements and terms them in a certain manner and then uses those terms in the sutras in order to prescribe certain operations. In a way, the Saudhnya sutras use the lexicon that is required for this grammar in an effective manner. This is the reason why we shall study now the Saudhnya sutras in the text of the Ashtadhyayi and also in the Paninian grammatical tradition. Why I use the word Paninian grammatical tradition will become clearer soon. For example, let us take the core concept of Vakya sentence. This is not explicitly defined in the Ashtadhyayi. This is used in the Ashtadhyayi but not defined. This concept is defined by the Vartika of Katyayana and in fact there are two Vartikas which define this particular concept of Vakya and they are Ekating Vakyam and Akhyatam Savyaya Karaka Visheshanam Vakyam. Let us look at these definitions one by one. What is the meaning of Ekating Vakyam? Ekating Vakyam means a unit of elements containing one thing, it is called a Vakya. For example, if we have the, if we have a sentence of this kind and we have three sub units of this sentence and they are constructed in this manner, some element in the left hand side plus a right hand side element plus another word which has a left hand side element followed by a right hand side element plus the third word. Now in this third word there has to be this right hand side element which has to be a thing. If this is the case then this entire unit can be called a sentence. So, one thing in a group of elements can become eligible to be called a sentence. Now just as in the first bullet that we saw just now, thing appears in the right hand side of the third word. Now there may be a situation where this thing occurs in the second word. And there may be a situation where the thing can occur in the first word in this position. Yet we can call all the three sentence because 
they have one thing. This thing, irrespective of any position, does give the status of a sentence to a unit. So, for example, gachati is a word which consists of this thing. So, this gachati by itself can be called a sentence. Plus, if there are other elements to be added, then that can also come together to be called a sentence. But gachati on its own can also be called a sentence. However, if we have a situation where there are three words and the right hand side element in all the three words is occupied by a sup, that means that there is no thing, then this cannot be called a sentence, as simple as that. So, a, un a unit, a group of elements in which appears one thing is called a sentence. So, all these three, they can be called a sentence plus this can also be called a sentence. So, now we have an expanded form of the formula that we presented in the previous slide. A thing suffix is already always added to a dhatu. So, if you have dhatu plus thing, this qualifies to be called a sentence. Now, if you have dhatu plus thing as one word and then there are other words and those words could be of the following kind dhatu plus thing plus sup and plus sup on the right hand side. Now, this left hand side slot can be filled in by a pratipadika. So, the finally expanded version of this formula is dhatu plus thing one word plus pratipadika slup plus sup second word plus pratipadika plus sup third word and this entire unit can still be called a sentence. But if you have pratipadika plus sup plus pratipadika plus sup plus pratipadika plus sup then this cannot qualify as a sentence. This cannot be called a sentence because it does not contain a single thing. This is extremely important as a definition of vakya or a sentence. Sentence is an important saudhnya defined in this manner by katyayana. Now, what does this mean? It means that it is a verbal action which is an essential aspect which makes a sentence an essential constituent, essential part which makes a sentence, essential condition for a sentence. It is this verbal action together with an end suffix thing whose absence will not make the unit to qualify for sentencehood. The action denoted by a verbal root is central as far as the description is concerned. It is also a vidheya, a predicate. A speech form is generated primarily to describe entities in the world coming together to accomplish an action. This is what it means when we say ekating vakyam. I repeat the last bullet. A speech form is generated primarily to describe entities in the world which come together to accomplish an action. So, it is an action that is to be described that is the focus of the description that is part of the meaning of a speech form. Now, let us look at the second and expanded definition provided in the Vartikas referred to above. Akhyatam Savyaya Karaka Visheshanam Vakyam. The verb indicating an action together with the participants of that action along with the indeclinable and qualifier is called a sentence. This is what it means. I repeat the verb Akhyata indicating an action Akhyata together with the participants of that action, karaka, along with the indeclinable, sa avyaya, 
and qualifier visheshana is called a sentence vakya. This definition complements the earlier definition by adding certain elements which fill in the slots. These elements delineate the participants of the action denoted by the verbal root. For example, Devadatta Gam Abhyaja Shuklamatra. Does this qualify to be called a sentence? Answer is yes. Why? What this mean? What does this mean? This string means O Devadatta bring the white cow here. Abhyaja means bring, it involves action of bringing by the verbal root aja. Gam is a cow which participates in the action of bringing of cow as an object. Shuklam is white qualifier of cow. Atra means here this is an indeclinable. So now we have an action with a thing in abhyaja. This is a this is an akhyata, gam is the karaka, tvam because abhyaja is second person singular. So, tvam is the kartrupada which is not different than devadatta over here. So, indirectly devadatta acts as the kartru, go is the participant in the relation of karma, shukla is the qualifier of ga go and atra is an indeclinable. So, we have an akhyata, we have a karaka, devadatta and go, we have a visheshana, shukla and we have an avyaya, atra. Therefore, now this definition, second definition of vakya applies here and this unit qualifies to be called a sentence, akhyatam savyaya karaka visheshanam vakyam. Now, these are not the necessary conditions, if one of them is dropped, the unit can still be called a sentence. But thing is a necessary condition. If thing is not there, then that unit does not qualify to be called a sentence. Now a sentence is made up of words or pada as they call it in Paninian grammar technically. Let us now look at the Saudhnya Pada which is defined in the Saudhnya Sutra Suptingantam Padam. Suptingantam Padam. What this means is a verbal element at the end of which appears either the sup or the thing suffix is called a Pada. This is the explanation of 1414 Suptingantam Padam. I repeat a verbal element at the end of which appears either the sup or the thing suffix is called a pada. So, pada is the basic element of a sentence. A sentence is made up of padas and each element can become eligible to be a part of the sentence if and only if they become a pada. So, not any element which is let us say taken out of lexicon can be used in a sentence unless and until it becomes a pada that means you add either a sup or a thing to it. Which means that any lexical item cannot be used on its own in the sentence. The structure of the sentence does not allow such a phenomenon. It has to be a pada, therefore either a sup or a thing has to be added. Now there are some words to which Paninian grammar adds the sup, but then it also deletes them. Such words are indeclinables and avyaya. However, from the point of view of the grammatical theory, they are called padas because a sup is added to them. Here are some examples of pada. On this slide, there are some padas that are listed 
which are taken out of the earlier data sets that we have seen with some accent marks. And I am not going to explain the accent marks right over here, but this is still an introduction to those accent marks as well. Omitting the accent marks, if we look at the words themselves, we come to know that these are the basic units of a sentence. Gramam for example, Gramam is a pada and therefore it qualifies to be a part of a sentence. Gachati is a pada. Why Gramam and Gachati is a pada? Because at the end of Gramam appears am which is a sup. At the end of Gachati appears ti which is a tip or ti. Am is part of the suffixes enlisted in 4, 1, 2 which we have seen before. T is part of the suffixes which are listed in 3478. These suffixes listed in 412 are called sups. These suffixes which are listed in 3478 they are called things. So, this is a sup, this is a thing which comes at the end of this string and therefore this string which is called this is called a pada now. Gramam is a pada. Gachati is a pada. Grama is not a pada, gam is not a pada, rama is not a pada, shala is not a pada, etc. But gramam is a pada, gachati is a pada, rama is a pada, shalam is a pada and so on. All the words mentioned on the right hand side, they are padas. All the words they are mentioned that are mentioned in the left hand side of the slide are not padas. These are the constituents of the padas. Padas are made up of these constituents, but these themselves are not padas. This, however, gramam, etc., is a pada. Fit to be used in a sentence, and a sentence is constructed, in fact, out of these padas. And this is a mix of subantas and tingantas. However, there are only two tingantas and four subantas. So, if we have Ramaha, Gramam, Gachati or Gramam, Gachati, Ramaha. Here we have three words and this unit of three words can be called a sentence because there is one thing over here in Gachati. Similarly, Shalam, Pashyati, Mohanaha. In this string, there is one thing in Pashyati. Therefore, this unit of three words can be called sentence. Now, for your quick reference, we have also noted down accents on the padas. Like for example, in gramam, there is a vertical bar on top. In gachati, there are two horizontal bars which get converted into one vertical bar over here. All these are the accents on the padas which are derived from the prakriti and pratyaya accents. So, just as the word gramam is derived from grama and am, similarly the accent of gramam is also derived from the accent of grammar and um. We have already seen the concept of compositionality before in which we have said that meaning word and accent. These are the three levels that are described in the Paninian grammar. So, meaning is described which acts as the cause, then the pada and then of course the accent together with the pada. On this slide, we look at the pada concept and we look at the examples of pada and we also look at the accent given on the pada. This is just for by way of introduction. We may not and need not follow this notion of accent right now, right here. We can bring it back once again. So, as was shown before, a pada is made up of prakriti and pratyaya. Grama is a prakriti, am is a pratyaya. Gam is a prakriti, a and t, they are pratyayas. How are they defined in Paninian grammar? But before answering that question, let me also say that there are some additional explanations or definitions of the term pada given in the Paninian grammar, which we shall also study later on. Those are called internal padas and those internal padas are not fit 
to be a part of a sentence unless sub and thing is added to them. But this internal pada concept we shall see later on. Right now let us look at the concepts of prakriti and pratyaya. They are not explicitly defined in the ashtadhyayi, neither prakriti nor pratyaya. We find later texts, modern texts defining those terms, but not the text of ashtadhyayi. But the specific types of prakritis are defined, namely dhatu and pratipadika, which we shall study here on. Pratyaya is also not defined and no type of pratyaya is also defined. Apart from these samdhyas and there are some repetitions, these are some other basic samdhyas which we have seen before like pada, suptingantam padam we have seen this is 1414, prakriti not defined but assumed. Pratyaya not defined yet assumed and used. The term Prakriti is also not used explicitly in the sutras of Ashtadhyayi in this particular sense. Dhatu and Pratipadika they are however used and also defined. For example, there are two sutras that we have seen earlier, Bhuvadayo Dhatavaha defining simple dhatu and arthava dadhatura pratyaya pratipadikam defining a pratipadika. Let us look at these in detail now. Let us first of all study the concept of dhatu, the saudhnya of dhatu. The saudhnya of dhatu is defined by two sutras. First is bhuvadayo dhatavaha 131 and the second one is sanadhyanta dhatavaha by 3132. Let us look at the first definition given by the Saudhnya Sutra Bhuvadayo Dhatavaha. The Saudhnya is Dhatu and Bhuvadayaha, this is the Saudhni to be defined. What does this mean? It means that the elements in the list which begins with Bhu and which denote an action are termed Dhatu. There are approximately 2000 elements in this list which denote an action and therefore they will be termed dhatu. So we come to know that this is a definition by enumeration. The 2000 items are enumerated and this sutra says that call these 2000 dhatus. So here are some examples, bhu, edha, patha, chi, ni, these are all the elements which are part of this list of 2000 elements. And they also denote action and so then they will be called dhatus by 131 bhuvadayo dhatavaha. Here is the second definition of dhatu. This is the saudhnya sutra and this is sanadhyanta dhatavaha which means those verbal elements which have the suffixes beginning with san sir so, for example at the end are termed dhatu sanadhyanta dhatavaha is a saudhnya sutra dhatu is the saudhnya sanadhyanta is the saudhni so in this saudhnya sutra dhatu is defined as the verbal element at the end of which appears the suffixes beginning with san san means sir at the end and so these terms are called dhatu. These are derived dhatus. The list of suffixes beginning with san or sa are stated in this section beginning with 315 up to 3131. They involve both types. Dhatu plus pratyaya is equal to dhatu and pratipadika plus pratyaya is equal to a dhatu. These are the two types. Let us take some examples and look at these ideas in a clearer manner. First, let us look at dhatu plus pratyaya making a dhatu, a derived verbal root. Let us take the first suffix san in the sense of desire. 
प्रिस्क्राइब बाय द सूत्र धातो कर्मण समान कर्त का इच्छायाम वा सो इफ यू टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ नोइंग वी हैव द वर्बल रूट इंडिकेटिंग द एक्शन ऑफ नोइंग प्लस वी एट द मीनिंग डिजायर टू इट विच मीन्स द डिजायर टू नो सो द वर्बल रूट ज्ञा मीन्स टू नो देर इज दिस फिक्स स्टेटेड बाय थ्री वन एट which means desire so now if we want to express the meaning desire to know we have to combine jnya plus sa do the process and we get the verbal root jidnyasa jidnyasa means desire to know this is a verbal root derived by adding the suffix sa to the verbal root jnya and now by 3132 jidnyasa becomes a verbal root this is an example of dhatu plus pratyaya giving rise to another dhatu here is another example of dhatu plus pratyaya giving an output of another dhatu this is an example of the suffix yang in the sense of repetition given by the sutra dhato rekacho halade kriya samabhihare yang what this means is the suffix yang is added after a verbal root which has only one vowel and which is a consonant beginning one and this suffix is added in the sense of frequent occurrence so if we have the meaning collection which is the meaning of the verbal root and we have to add the repetition meaning to it which means repeated action of collection then in order to express this meaning we would choose the verbal root chi which stands for the action of collecting and the suffix yang stated by 3122 in order to express the repetition and then we join them together and we get the verbal root che chi ya dhatu which indicates the repeated action of collection this is a derived verbal root the third example is that of nich which means inspiration stated by the sutra hetumati cha 3126 what this means is the suffix nich is added after a verbal root in the sense of an inspiration so if we have to express the meaning an action of reading and to which we have to add inspiration together with this the meaning of the action is inspiration to do an action of reading then in order to express this meaning we select the verbal root patha and we add the suffix nich to it which gives us the verbal root pathi remember pathi is the verbal root dhatu plus pratyaya giving us another dhatu and this is to this is added another suffix say thing and we get the verbal form now let us look at the other type of dhatu which is obtained by adding a pratyaya to a pratipadika so we have the suffix catch here in the sense of one desires for oneself the sutra is super atmana catch 318 which means immediately after the word ending with the sub is added a suffix catch in the sense of one desires for oneself so if you have knowledge and we need to add the meaning to desire for oneself and so we get by this combination to desire knowledge for oneself in order to explain express this meaning we would say jnanam knowledge atmanah ichchati to desire for oneself and in order to express this we will say we will use the word jnana to which we will add catch which means atmanah ichchati which will be combined then and we get the form gnani ya which is a verbal root derived by adding a pratyaya to a pratipadika this is the second type of dhatu by adding a pratyaya to a pratipadika gnani ya the second example of this kind is the suffix kamyach in the same meaning on desires for oneself stated by 319 which means that 
immediately after the word ending with a sub is added a suffix kamyach in the sense of one desires for oneself. So, in the same meaning, jnana matmanaha ichchati, we have jnana plus kamyach and that gives us jnana kamya, the verbal root which means to desire knowledge for oneself. This is the second example of the phenomenon in which pratyaya is added to a pratipadika and a dhatu is generated. The third example is that of kyang, suffix, which is added by the sutra kartukyang salopascha, by 3111. What this means is <coughs> immediately after the word ending in a sup, which is a standard of comparison, is added a suffix kyang in the sense of one behaves like and the consonant s at the end is dropped, is deleted. So we have the meanings like horse plus one behaves and we get the combination in the sense to behave like a horse. And now in order to express this, we will say ashva iva and then acharati to having put them together, we will get, we will get ashva plus kyang, kyang in the sense of iva acharati and we will get the form ashvaya. This is a verbal root obtained by adding a verbal suffix to a pratipadika. This is a dhatu. In accordance with the definition sanadhyanta dhatavaha. What is the output of a dhatu? There are two outputs. First one is dhatu to which thing is added and so you get the pada foremost and the most important function. The other important function is you add a krit suffix to a dhatu and you get pratipadika as an output. This is an extremely important function of the verbal root or dhatu. So what is a thing? Thing is a suff list of suffixes stated in 3478. We have already seen this when we studied the technique of forming the pratyahara. These are the 18 suffixes at the beginning of which comes ti, at the end of which comes ng, we join them together to get the acronym thing, the pratyahara thing, which stands for all the elements that come in between ti and ng and also ti. These are the suffixes stated in the section 3478. These are the suffixes which are stated to be the substitutes of abstract suffixes known as lakaras, like lat, lit, lut, rut, etc. These abstract suffixes denote tense and mood. They form initial part of the derivation process and get substituted by thing. Thing suffixes mean person, number, tense or mood and also kartru, karma or bhava. So here are the 10 lakaras, lat which means present tense whose form is pathati like, lit is perfect tense and whose forms are like papatha, lut is for future tense tomorrow onwards and whose forms are pathita etc. Lut is future again but a general future, today's future and the forms are like patishyati etc. Lot is imperative mood whose forms are like pathatu, pathata, pathantu etc. Lung is past imperfect whose forms are like apathat. This past imperfect begins with yesterday and goes on and on. Then we have ling, potential mood whose form is pathet, benedictive mood, its form is pathyat. Lung is an aorist, a simple past whose form is apathit etc. And rung is the conditional mood whose form is apatishyat, etc. What is a krit? Krit is defined by 3193, which says kridating, dhatoho ating pratyayaha krid bhavati. A suffix added immediately after a verbal root that is a dhatu and which is not a thing is termed krit, very simple definition. The word form thus derived is termed pratipadika by 1246. Krit suffixes denote bhava and karaka 
एंड सिक्स कारक कर्ता कर्म करण संप्रदान अपादान एंड अधिकरण द कृदंत वर्ड्स कृदंत मीनिंग कृत अंत यस सच वर्ड्स आर प्राइमेरिली एडजेक्टिव अनलेस स्पेसिफाइड अदरवाइज एज अ संज्ञा एज अ नेम एंड नाउन एंड सो ऑन हियर आर सम कृत सफिक्सेस फॉर योर रेफरेंस कृत्य सफिक्सेस नोटेबली य तव्य एंड अनीय स्टेटेड इन द सेक्शन थ्री वन नाइंटी फाइव अप टू वन थर्टी टू देन वी हैव त्रुच त्रुन त्रुन इज स्टेटेड त्रुच इज स्टेटेड इन थ्री वन वन थर्टी थ्री त्रुन इज स्टेटेड इन थ्री टू वन थर्टी फोर अन इज स्टेटेड इन थ्री टू वन घाई इज स्टेटेड इन थ्री थ्री एटीन तुमुन इज स्टेटेड बाई थ्री थ्री वन फाइव एट एंड क्वा इज स्टेटेड बाई थ्री फोर ट्वेंटी सिक्स we shall look at the forms of these pratyayas later on to summarize what we have said so far the technical terms in the paninian grammar reflect the structure of paninian grammar dhatu and pratipadika are the basic building blocks which represent the lexicon of sanskrit language this lexicon is both derived as well as underived the derived lexicon is interlinked with the internal lexical items the derivation of such a lexicon is theoretically infinite this lexicon is static as well as dynamic it also reflects the productive capacity of paninian grammar this capacity to produce such n number of sequences is the strength of paninian grammar using this capacity modern indian languages derive vocabulary to express newly arriving meanings and so on we shall study the concept of pratipadika in the next lecture thank you for your attention